Thank you, Michael. And welcome to Peace Lutheran Church here in Peoria. Uh, very first thing, would like to uh, thank Pastor Al for his many years of service here at Peace with us. And uh, we wish him the best in his retirement, him and Kay and all his family. Likewise, we want to welcome Pastor Ryan into our midst. We look forward to many years of worship, ministry, grace, generosity, and generations with him. Also, with him coming, uh, we would ask that you please wear your name tags so that he can get to know us a little bit better. Michael, can you lead us into worship?
Thank you. Oh God, redeemer and renewer of life, make in us a new creation. May we not only be blessed by your gracious activity in our world, but may we become a means by which both neighbor and stranger are blessed. Amen. Our lesson today is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, and chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Then the angel showed me the river of water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river, stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be the city, and, in his, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Here ends the lesson. The Holy Gospel according to John. Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's a time of change. Um, being here today, recording this service, for those of you who watch it online, is a change for me. Uh, it's, I did one short message back in Lent of 2020, but for the most part, I've been involved in recordings here just as an assisting minister. And I have something up on the screen to read, or I've got a script that I've written to read. Today, Pastor Al, on his way out, charged me with delivering the message. He actually said to me, you don't have to preach on that text if you don't want to. You can preach about anything you like. And then for the last four weeks, as he's preached on the earlier chapters of Revelation, he's promised the congregation that I'm going to be preaching today on the last chapters. So he, he gave it to me and took it away. It's a time of change in our church. Last week we said goodbye to Pastor Al, our pastoral shepherd of 14 years, and next week we'll welcome Pastor Ryan Hertz. I feel a little bit like a filling sandwich between two pastors. Pastor Al often said that he was a Lutheran because they let him in, and I feel pretty much that way myself. I see myself as a Christian who happens to be attending a Lutheran church. I've attended many different denominations over my lifetime. In fact, uh, Pastor Al's predecessor, Steve Talmadge, once referred to me as a religious mongrel because of the number of denominations in my background. But I was always comfortable in different denominations because the principal message of Christianity is the same. And we all have the same fundamental belief in Christ. There's just a lot of noise around the edges within the different denominations. And I think as long as you focus on that central belief, it really doesn't matter what church you're in. I was on the church council when Al arrived, part of the council that called him, and I'm on that council again now. Prior to Al arriving, we introduced assisting ministers to peace. The reason for that was that uh, we wanted to help out from the, uh, we were council members predominantly at the time, wanted to help out with our interim uh, pastor, Jim Lundeen, and uh, make it easier for him. So we stepped up and it worked out pretty well. And particularly when, unfortunately, Jim went down with a heart attack uh, towards the end of his interim pastorship, we were able to keep things going uh, until he came back and then Al arrived. When our new pastor arrived, I expected to be making my way back to the Puyu for the services. But Al decided he liked the assisting minister concept and kept it, and even allowed some of us to take on a presiding role when he was not, allowed, not able to be here. I found it a very fulfilling part of my church life, and I know other assisting ministers have also found it very fulfilling. Another thing that he did was to create a preaching academy, which is how I'm here now. Uh, he started us off with some very, very basic stuff. Uh, I went back through my records, and the first message he had me put together was a commercial encouraging people to read Psalm 22. It was 160 words. Uh, I'm no longer that brief. That was back in 2011. And at that same year, Pastor Al baptized me here in this sanctuary. He helped me grow in my faith journey through his preaching and his teaching, but also through short and sometimes longer conversations that we had over the years. And there's one that always sticks in my mind, and this was about prayer. I asked him one day, why, if God has a master plan, and we believe that he's omnipotent, why do we pray for things to change? Are we believing it's like Facebook, where if you get enough likes, God's going to change the way things happen? And Al's response was very interesting to me, and it helped me a lot. He said that praying for people causes you to be more compassionate, and hopefully they will feel the love you have for them through your prayers. 
I pray differently now. I don't pray for outcomes, or I try not to. I pray for guidance. I pray for help. I pray for leadership. If someone is sick, I pray for healing rather than recovery, knowing that in God's plan, healing might involve taking someone home to him. Of course, human nature does get in the way. Um, I don't actually pray for success in my local sports teams, but I, I do know people that do. And uh, there are times I know when I'm assisting on a Sunday and I'm reading through my prayers, I suddenly realize I've prayed for an outcome. Uh, maybe the out outcome is peace in the world, but uh, it's still, still something I'm praying for rather than looking for the guidance. I prefer to pray for the people who lead us to feel God in their hearts and minds and turn towards him to run a world that's filled with love. The book of Revelation is a description of John's vision as uh, showed to him by angels. And when I hear that, I think, well, how did he get this? I mean, when you look at some of the terminology and some of the imagery in Revelation, you can think, well, he must have been on the magic mushrooms or, or something like that, because it, it really is way out there. It reminds me a little bit of Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, when he first encountered the ghost of Christmas past, he told him, well, you're just nothing but an undigested piece of cheese. Um, so, did John dream, or did he actually have an angel visit him, as happened to many other people in the Bible? Revelation starts with letters to each of the seven different churches. And I think it's interesting that those seven letters are different. It seems to me that that shows that God doesn't regard us all the same, that each of us will be treated individually according to what our needs are and what he feels we should be doing. Paul also wrote to those churches, telling them what they needed to do and admonishing them when they were going astray. And I think, just like those early churches, we in today's modern church still need that help still need those reminders of where we should be going. Revelation should help us with this because these final chapters show a, a vision of a restored world with trials and tribulations in the past. God's people are restored to him and return to the Garden of Eden. Revelation represents hope for the hopeless as we've been reminded over the last few weeks. Order has come out of chaos. Do you ever dream weird, disjointed dreams? A few weeks ago, I did. I turned up here on Thursday, just as I did today, and uh, sure enough, Al was waiting for me, and he said, what are you doing here? You're not scheduled today. And I said, well, I am, and as I do the scheduling of the assisting ministers, I, I was pretty certain I was, but I pulled out my trusty spreadsheet, and sure enough, the name on it was somebody I'd never heard of. So I well, sat down in the pew and I thought, well, I'll watch how this goes. And then suddenly the church was full. Instead of just being the three or four people that are normally here to record the, the service, uh, Michael, as you may have worked out, is not actually here. We speak to him as if he is, but someone once pointed out to me that he wore two different shirts in the same service, so they know he's not here all the time. But the church was full. There were carnival people. There was a bookmaker boasting about all the big bets he'd had. There were people I knew, people I didn't knew, know, some from my past. There were even probably some from my future that I hadn't yet met. A lady sat next to me, and I guess there's one of these in every community, and she seemed to know everybody. Well, I, I'd had enough of this. I thought, well, I'm so confused, I'm going to leave. So as I got up to leave, the lady said to me, well, would you call a cab for me and my husband? I said, sure, but why, why not let me drop you off? I had no idea where they lived, but it, I figured if they were in this church, it couldn't be that far away. Well, then things get even weirder. I, I pick up my car and come up back to the front of the parking lot, and she's gone. But suddenly there's a man I've never seen sitting in my car. And he said, well, you know, you can take me home. I said, well, that's very nice of you, but where do you live? And then he suddenly mentioned somewhere in Minnesota, which is where I used to live. 
And I suddenly realized I was no longer in peace. When I looked around at the building I'd just left, it was not Peace Lutheran Church, it was just a church hall somewhere, and I could see peace off way in the distance. The, uh, the gentleman said, well, I tell you what, if you can drop me so-and-so, uh, I'll give you directions how to get home. Well, when I dropped him off, he ran away. So I sort of lost, but I'm smart. I, I've got one of these cars with got lots of little buttons and a global positioning system. And so I pressed button two, which is uh, the one that puts up on the navigation system my journey home. Number one, by the way, is Janet's phone. I'm not a dummy. I, I know where number one should be. Nothing happened. All I got was music I'd never heard of before and frankly don't want to hear again. And then I thought, well, there's a voice activation system on this. I'll try that. Now, bear in mind that when I lived in Minnesota, I didn't have a GPS in my car, so I don't know what I was trying to do. And trying to get back home to a Minnesota home with an Arizona car wasn't going to work. But I kept trying, and then two teenage girls were walking past, and they heard me. And I said, hey, mister, can we help you? Because we understand this stuff. Well, even they failed. Luckily, I, I awoke then, and suddenly I'm back in Arizona. Uh, I'm back in my own car with the buttons all working properly. An order had come out of chaos. I have no idea what the dream meant, but I'm glad, glad it was over. You know, we live in a world where the pandemic is still, is still raging. We really don't know what's going on in a lot of the stuff around the world. We don't know how bad it is in other places. Right now, it appears that what we've looked at as a war in Afghanistan is over. But is it really? What's happening in Eritrea, Yemen, there are wars going on in those and many other places. The pandemic is raging in places we don't know about. But we have to look forward. As Al has talked about Revelation over the last few weeks, he's pointed out the imagery that is in there and how John is trying to bring to us some sense of what the future holds. And one of my favorite parts of the imagery is not the, the beasts with multiple horns and eyes and all that sort of thing, but the very early part of it when he refers to the early churches as lampstands. To me, that says that they were beacons of light for the early Christians. And I think it behoves us today to continue to be beacons of light as we continue through our journey. I talked about wars raging on. I talked about the pandemic. Another issue that we deal with today is the fact that we have many leaders who seem to be more concerned with scoring points off each other than they are with trying to lead us. And we look for leadership, I think in that case, to God, to Jesus. We have to continue to live by faith and trust in God. We need to share a sense of loving each other. Remember, when Christ said love one another, he made no exceptions. And we've got to cultivate and maintain that love as it's given to us in abundance by God. At this point, I can think of no better words to summarize what I want to say than these from a recent practice document that uh, the Faith Formation team here put out. Revelation is a reminder that our allegiance to the gospel will be challenged and tested. The promise of Revelation is that no matter what the world says, God wins, love wins. So when we look around and shake our heads at what is happening, John wants us to keep our focus upon the good that God might be doing in disguise. Ultimately, it is God alone who gives us the keys to life abundantly. Remember that God is the one who can take tragedy and turn it into triumph. Despite all the bad in the world around us, we can always look forward to a future full of possibilities. Next week, we welcome a new pastor. But don't expect Pastor Ryan to do everything on his own. He won't have all the answers. With him, we need to continue to support each other and focus on the mission of Peace Lutheran Church, to share Christ with the world and grow disciples for Jesus. The Church Council at the moment is having a look at the various ministry teams that we've established over the years. The pandemic has meant that most of those teams haven't 
met for uh, the past 18 months. A couple have plodded along and managed to keep going, but we want to look at who the members are. So you may well get a tap on the shoulder and say, would you be interested in serving on this team? It's part of our growing together, part of being a church that can help other people. A small effort by individuals serving on one of those teams can really help a lot in helping the council to manage the overall affairs of the church. We know that in the end, God wins, love wins. And when you realize that, although these last two chapters of Revelation seem sort of strange in the way they're written and are frankly kind of scary, they don't seem that unrealistic. At the end of the day, order will come out of chaos in God's time. Amen. Please join with me as we make profession of our baptismal faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for Christians across the world. 
Watch over all areas of the world that are experiencing unrest or natural disasters, such as hurricanes, earthquakes, and fires. Help those who are being persecuted for their beliefs find safety. Equip our bishops and pastors of the church with wisdom and insight as they provide leadership during these difficult times in our world. We pray for the well-being of our church on earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We ask for guidance for our church leaders as we go through this time of transition, as we await the, uh, the arrival of Pastor Ryan and his family, we ask that you also bless them as they work through the final preparation of their move from Pennsylvania to Arizona. Help our leaders and church to provide support. We pray for a smooth transition for our church. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As the number of COVID cases continues to rise, we ask for healing for those who have gotten sick, especially for the children. We pray for those working on vaccines and those who treat the sick. As schools continue to deal with the many challenges they face with this disease, we continue to offer our prayers for students, staff, and families. We pray for discernment with decisions that must be made at this time and understanding for those who must make those decisions. We pray for calmness and understanding for all during these times. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, we thank you for the wonders of our world and for the beauty of your creation. Please guide us to use our resources wisely and carefully around the world. May we show love and reverence to you, our Lord, by caring for all that you have created and shared with us. We humbly give you praise and thanks. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for those who are experiencing challenges in their lives. Heal loved ones who have been injured or who are ill. Help those experiencing grief as they lose loved ones through injury or illness. We pray for our families who have been separated for various reasons. May, may those who are far from home find comfort. May, may we provide comfort to those who are new to our area. Help us to remember kindness, compassion, and forgiveness in our lives. We pray for those in need of comfort and hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for your help as those in Afghanistan are facing perils. Watch over those who are still trying to reach freedom. We ask that you keep those who remain there safe in the light of the challenges they face. We pray that you help us to be an instrument of your peace in a world of conflict. Please help us to be witness, a witness to the power of faith in a world lost in unbelief and the bearer of joy that overcomes the sorrow of a fallen world. Continue to fill us with the spirit of love and peace toward one another in these challenging times. Hear us, O oh God your mercy is great. Hear our prayers, gracious God, and grant us all that we need to live as your spirit-filled people in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Thank you, Peter, for your message and the inspiration that you have shared with us. Thank you, Janet, for the prayers that you've offered from this congregation and this community. Thank you out there for your generosity. We have been witnessing many disasters and struggles in the world. Uh, here at Peace, we have an opportunity to continue 
the missions and ministry that help those people in need wherever they are, in Afghanistan, abroad, and here at home. I ask that you please go to our website or the Synod website and look for Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services and also Lutheran Relief Services. Now, let us pray. We give thanks for you who clothe us in your holiness and sustain us by your spirit. Your generosity is boundless. As we offer you our praise, receive these gifts as our act of worship, trusting in the redeeming work of your church around the world. Amen. Please join with us at the table of Christ with the elements in your home. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now join in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, empower and equip us to be ambassadors of your good news in all we say and all we do. Make us witnesses of your kingdom, signs of your love, and messengers of peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shine your light in the way we live. Send us out in the power of your spirit as we receive. May we freely give. Send us out, send us out, send us out for your glory. Let all we do be praise to you. Send us out for your glory. Send us out in the power. out in the power of your spirit, oh, fill us up so we overflow. Send us out, send us out, send us out for your glory. Let all we do be praise to you. Send us out for your glory. Send us out for your glory. Send us out for your glory. Go in peace as people of peace. Thanks be to God.